The year is 1939. It's the start of World War II, and South Africa has joined the struggle on the side of the British, fighting mostly on the battlefields of North and East Africa. Of the countless soldiers injured during these battles, it's the men from Commonwealth countries, like South Africa, Canada and Australia, that end up in the Durban Harbour, and eventually in the care of Nurse Hartig. This was my great-grandmother, Violet Lily Hartig. I have always known my Granny Vi as a powerful woman, a person of immense intelligence and wit. She was someone I looked up to. Not physically, of course. As a woman in her 90s, she was no taller than a dining room chair, but with a tongue so sharp it could cut you down to size or have you rolling with laughter. My brother's long hair and scruffy beard were always an easy target. With her earrings in and her hair perfectly in place, Vi could take on the world. But her true strength lay in the warmth of her heart. You could see she was a woman who loved her family. Her face would light up at the sight of her great-grandchildren, and I have since never known a smile as soft and sincere as hers. It's no wonder she was drawn to helping others. In 1941, when she was just 23 years old, Violet joined the South African Military Nursing Service. She worked on the ambulance trains, carrying injured soldiers from the hospital ships in Durban to the military hospital in what was then Roberts Heights in Pretoria. Fight for your country and you'll be a hero. At least, that's what the men were promised. Nothing could have prepared them for the reality. Many of the soldiers on the train suffered from shot-off limbs. Others needed amputations or emergency surgeries. Maggots crawled out from inside plaster casts, feasting on wounds that needed to be cleaned and dressed. The trip took over 16 hours. The living conditions were cramped and there was no time to rest. As the train chugged on from station to station, Moy River to Ladysmith, Harry Smith to Johannesburg, the doctors and nurses performed their duties. Violet spoke of the exhaustion and how the smell of rotting, gangrenous flesh made her want to vomit. Even though she hated smoking, they were told that it was the only way to get the putrid odour out of their lungs. The summer heat was thick and stifling, the winters deathly cold, and it was up to Nurse Hartig to keep these men alive until they got to the station in Pretoria. While the rest of the world fought grand battles that went down in history books, Violet experienced its true horrors without ever leaving the country. This was her battlefield. To Vi, World War II was a train traveling along a tiny strip of land in the middle of South Africa. I can almost picture her on that train, calm in the chaos, barking out orders and getting things done. Day and night, grown men howled in pain and it broke her heart. I can imagine her sitting by their cots, holding their hands and telling them to man up because they were going to be just fine. It was tough, but Vice spirit could never be broken. To think, this incredible person is the woman I've known my whole life as my Granny Vi. She passed away about a month ago at the age of 99, just a few weeks short of 100. And even though her body started to crumble, her mind was just as sharp and her spirit just as feisty as ever. To me, her memory is the legacy of her unbelievable life. And though I will always treasure this memory, it's the strong, incredible woman that she was which will remain with me forever. <laughs>